Now I picked up this nine bot ES, I think three electric scooter and it's got an error code on it. Uh, so I picked it up really cheap and I think there's a way to fix it. So that's why I picked it up just to see if we could uh, try and repair it on the cheap. So let me show you the error code real quick. So it'll power on okay. So it's getting power. But you can see it's giving me an error code 18. Uh, let me turn this off so it doesn't get so annoying. Okay, let me try and turn it off here. So it could be the, I've, I've looked online, it's either the controller, uh, which is an expensive part to fix, or sometimes they say they're just a the loose wire at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and take it apart and see if it's just a loose wire. And if that error goes away, then I think we got a, uh, a real cheap, really inexpensive uh, scooter. But if not, you know, I didn't pay a lot for it so I can pick up the con spare controller and take it out. And um, you know, it'll be half a part anyway. So let's dig into it. Okay, so I picked up this nine bot Segway scooter and it was giving me that error code. And I've been doing some research online and it's possible that the wires in between here, basically the motor and the battery is, has been disconnected. So what you wanna do is basically separate these two parts first. Let me go ahead and do that. It just takes, it's a couple of uh, Allen or Torx head screws. So let me go get some tools and take these things off and see what happens. Okay, it looks like someone's been in here before because normally this is a sticker that is um, covered and if you open it up, your warranty expires. So let's see what happens when we do that, but um, let's go ahead and open it up. So now I've opened it up and you can see that there um, are several wire connectors here and uh, they all seem to be connected. Uh, there is one, one, oops, one wire in here that doesn't have anything connected to it. So I'm not exactly sure what that wire's for, but everything else seems to be tightly connected. Uh, and so that's not the issue. I'm still getting the error code, so you can hear it. And so it's still giving me an 18 error code. So I think the controller itself is bad. Uh, so we're gonna have to take some more things apart. Let me turn this off here and then keep investigating. But it wasn't the simple fix that I thought it was gonna be. Uh, but anyway, we got this real cheap. So we'll keep uh, digging into it, see if we can fix it up. There are some more wires that are inside the control, the handlebar here. So let's go ahead and uh, remove the two hex, or the two hex keys that are on each side of this and open up the wires there and see what we got. Okay, and mine came with this uh, extended battery pack, so you need to remove that in order to get the internal battery uh, out from this tube. So let me go ahead and remove those. It's also just a couple of hex screws, uh, so just pull those off. Okay, and once that's off, then you wanna remove all the rest of the hex screws, and then uh, a couple more steps, and then we can take everything out of the tube here. Okay, and then there's uh, those two sort of slots on each side, and I just used a pair of needle nose pliers and you just kind of turn it counterclockwise, uh, half a turn or a quarter of a turn, and then you want to uncoil this wire. So you see how they've got this in a little bit of a slip or a little knot here so it doesn't uh, accidentally feed itself down through that rubber gasket. So you want to undo that so you can feed the wire through it. So now I've popped it off, and so you can just uh, kind of feed the wire through the top of the gasket here. Um, there you go. And so all I did is, um, can you, if you imagine looking straight down into the tube, is just get a set of needle nose pliers so that they can um, fit kind of like that. And then you just kind of give it a, a quarter turn. And then uh, you just kind of, um, not pry it, but just sort of slowly pull its way out. It's rubber, so it's going to have a little bit of uh, friction. Uh, but it works itself out pretty easily. So you do that on the bottom as well. Uh, so the same thing, it's got a little bit of a little rubber cap, almost exactly the same as this. So get your needle nose pliers in there, give it a quarter turn to unlock it, and then pull it out. I don't know why they do this, but I actually had to use three different sizes of uh, Allen keys in order to get uh, all of the screws out. But there's a small one that goes right in there. And that one I forgot to take out and I had to get a go find a little specialty, really, really small Allen key. I think it was like a um, a two mil, two, two millimeter, which um, thank goodness I had in order to get that last one out. Okay, and then once that came out, it just kind of, everything just kind of slides out. So you can free it from the tube 
and there's the controller. Let me uh, get two hands on it. Okay, so now the controller is out, and uh, let me just uh, make sure all the wires are plugged in into the controller tightly uh, to see if that might solve the problem. Okay, so you can see uh, the battery just uh, has two connectors. So there's this one white uh, connector, and then there's this sort of two-prong connector uh, that's squared off on one side. So when you put it back, it won't... Um, it won't, uh, you can't put it in incorrectly. And then this, this wire that was all the way at the top is kind of just press fit into this channel here. So let me go ahead and order a new controller. I mean, I've got it all out. So let's see if this, uh, this solves a problem because apparently uh, these tend to go bad. So let's, uh, let's get a new one in and see if that fixes the problem. Several days later. Okay, so after a bit of a shipping delay, uh, my part finally arrived the controller which is uh, the replacement for this this unit here so let's take a look here comes in this nice generic packaging let's see is it taped up it might be taped up let me see if I can just open it up without getting a knife here okay you can tell looks pretty much exactly the same it's got wires that are shoved in here. So that goes up to the controller. We've got a couple of uh, things to plug in on this side. This side looks almost exactly the same. Blue, yellow, brown, and then these controllers. So let's plug everything back in before we put everything back in the tube and see if uh, we solve this uh, error 18 code. So let's start by plugging this in here. So this side goes in, snaps in there. Then you've got this piece that, got this piece that connects to this one, snaps in. And there should be one more that goes in. Okay. That side goes there. And then on this side, I uh, get myself some room here. Okay, this new design is slightly different. I had to get the plug all the way down inside. It's a little hard to see, but it only goes in one way. And um, I use these uh, forceps, locking forceps, which really helps uh, get that seated. So let's connect this side. And uh, we're just gonna put it back the way I took it apart which is match up all the color connectors. Put that together. I'm missing a blue one here. The blue one's a really short one. And then this connector goes here. Make sure that's snug. And let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay. So now the error code's gone away. So let's see if we can... Uh... Oh yeah, that's it. We got it going. You can see the wheels going. So, all right, so let me go ahead and um, actually reassemble the whole thing. But that's all it took was, uh, even though it says it's a hall sensor, which is uh, inside the motor here, it's actually the, the control board here, which you can get on uh, from Amazon relatively inexpensively. Uh, so I will uh, leave the link in the description below. And again, if you get uh, a error code 18, uh, that is the way to solve it. So. Let me put everything back together and we'll try it again. Okay, and then one of the things uh, that you wanna make sure that you're doing is uh, using some blue Loctite uh, when you're putting in all of these little screws uh, because with the vibration it, uh, of riding the scooter, it's definitely going to back out some of these screws. So definitely make sure you use the blue Loctite, not the red Loctite, but the blue Loctite, which is uh, medium strength. So make sure that, make sure that your screws stay uh, locked in three weeks later okay so you can see it's all together so I put everything back together uh, and I'm just out here in this empty parking lot and uh, we're gonna give it a try so we'll turn it on you can see there's no error code so let's uh, let's give it a test and there we go it's going going I don't know how well you can see it but we're going 
brakes work good. And it's cruising along here. See, max speed is about 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm going 19. I'm going downhill a little bit. So, get out here. Uh, just going to go across the street, do a little bit of shopping. But, yeah, looks like it's working pretty good. All it was was that controller, even though it said it was the hub motor. The code for that hub motor actually led to the uh, controller. So, anyway, that's it. If you're enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and to the newsletter using the links below. We'll share more tool buying tips, classic car and classic motorcycle project finds, some motorsport news, and maybe a wrenching tip or two.